we're really working the lower body up here. Um, there's loads of stuff you can do with the upper body as well, but for you guys, it's going to be the main focus. Um, and the main start point is going to be calves. What I'd say to you is, um, the more uncomfortable any particular muscle group feels when you're rolling it, the more you need to roll it. So if any particular point is really, really sore, I'll try and tip you off before we get to the really sore points. So you don't kind of see really sick get on the roller. Um, that's, that, that's an area that needs a bit of attention, yeah. Okay. Um, and the idea behind the rollers is really just to, um, if, if you like, it's a cheap sports massage. Well, it's, you know, it's cheap to go and see a physio or a sports therapist on a week to week basis. Spot anyway, it's worth doing this, this one, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to start with the calves, which is obviously an area that gets a fair bit of uh, tension when you guys are out running. And for most of us, these are really, really tight, and we don't have enough range of movement in the ankle. So when I say range of movement in the ankle, I mean that we don't have the ability to do that and just drive our knee forward over our toes, which sounds like a simple thing, but for a lot of us, we kind of lost that ability. But if you want to stand up for a second. Do a quick test to see what your range of movement is like. Alright? If you stand with your feet about shoulder width apart and your toes pointing forwards, just get your arms out in front of you, and all we're going to do is sit into a nice deep squat and try and keep our heels on the floor. So we've got we've got it here, that's brilliant, that's pretty, pretty good, that's pretty good, Steve's pretty good as well, but we can cut one foot up. Alright? So this is for you. <laughs> Great, seat, but that's better than I expected. For a lot of people, you know, they're not able to uh, keep the heels on the floor when they do that. Um, and that's a sign of tight calves. We're, we're well looking at anyway. Okay, so, to rule your calves, all you're going to do is, um, and we're going to split the calf into two if you like. So, you're going to start by right just above the heel bone and work to mid calf to start off with. And then we're going to roll separately this part of the calf and across the muscle, is that right? Yeah. Two ways of doing it. If you're struggling to support your whole body weight on your hands, put the spare foot on the floor, push this leg down onto the roller, and simply roll backwards and forwards like so. Okay? It's important when you're doing it, obviously the muscle wraps all the way around from, the, from bone to bone. We need to rotate the foot while we're doing it. Yeah? And gradually, Work your way around. Alright? So we're getting all the way around. Depending on how you run, what your running techniques like, whether you train as a run warner or whatever, you might get a lot of soreness up this area. And you get any shin problems or shin speed when you run. No, that's the thing that's really working with what you call the If you're not feeling anything on that, then you need to cross one leg over the other to put more pressure on the leg. So the more pressure you can exert, the more benefit you get. Obviously your hair is not. Lift yourself up on your hands. And then, same again. Okay, so we're just rolling back to Remember, we're only rolling this part of the, the car to start off with. Yeah. Fine and stuff. Yeah. Anybody not feeling a thing? That's enough. If, if you don't feel anything on the rollers, your next step is a bit of plastic piping, which puts more pressure through the muscle and will get more of an effect deeper into the muscle. Swap legs all the way through if you start thinking about right, which leg's sore, right or left. The sore spots or the leg that's been giving you most soreness is the one that needs the most attention. The other thing I want you to think about and look for as you're rolling is really sore spots. So finding a, a, a spot that's really, really painful, then we can do something about that by stopping directly on the sore spot and resting on it and holding that position for 30 seconds. So that, that would just be a, what we call a, a knot, if you like, in the muscle, like a lesion in the muscle. We want to get the muscle to relax and try and dissipate that knot. To do that, we need to put direct pressure on it for about 30 seconds. It's exactly what I, Sports physio, sports, sports match as therapist to do it for you. You can do it yourself. Anybody found a real sore spot? Or is it all sore? Oh, Got the hurts. Yeah. It's like, especially right here. So, find the spot. There may, there, there may well be more than one, 
rest on each individual one at a given time to relax here. Yeah. Um, one thing you can do, I'll pass those around and have all those. All they are is, is um, good, yeah, so just, just here to here for now. Have a go on them as well, because if you've got a sauce pot, they actually get into it better than the rows to some extent, and they're like three pounds from the toilet, uh, from the pet home, not the toilet. Um, so try them if you want to. You can roll on that as well, yeah. But obviously, if you're rolling on the ball, you're not going to be able to do that. You're going to have to keep one foot on the floor. Yeah? If we move up now, you don't both hold on both legs. If we move up to this part of the cart now, yeah? So this is the meaty bit, if you like. So this is where you probably experience more soreness. Any pronators in the group? Anybody told you all about pronate when you run? No? No? I do a little bit. Do you? So you might find that your lateral head is sore on the outside, so you can spend a bit more time on that. Yeah? Yeah? yeah. <laughs> Well, that's why, so if you're feeling it, put the other foot on the floor and just press down. No, my arm's not my legs. <laughs> that's often the problem. That's why, it's, to some extent, the balls work better. You can dig in deeper, but you do it with one foot on the floor, yeah? Yeah. So you have to lift no, no, the body up. <laughs> in theory, you keep going until it stops there. For most of us, that will probably be all day. Um, so you, the, the best advice is spend about a minute on each area. So a minute here, move up a minute, swap legs a minute, and we'll work our way up here. But if you're doing this before you go out, what we're doing is we're loosening the muscle off and hopefully allowing the joint to move on. Before and after. Before and after this, yeah. Afterwards, it'll help you avoid tightening too much, yeah. What I'll try and do, if you remind me before you go, I'll just point out, there's maybe three areas that you really want to do after you finish, just so you're not cracking around with too long after you finish, because you don't want to relax that as well, if you finish your run. Try and both legs. Go to the both legs. So remember, you're trying to ask yourself here, left or right, which is tight, and where are the sore spots? Work on those sore spots. <laughs> what I would say to you as well is, if you're like, alert now, it's going to get better. The more you run, the stiffer the muscles will get, so you need to keep on top of it. You probably need to spend a little bit longer on the really sore areas, more than just one minute, to start off with. But as you get used to it and you do more of it, then you'll need to do less and less of this. Yeah, they'll, they'll get more mobile, get more flexible. You alright? Yeah? Yeah. Then, sort of the Outside. The, the, the inside, yeah, yeah. So you maybe run a little bit more on the outside of the club. So this inside, the medium part of it, the car is out to work out to control that. How are you meant to run? That's not Run however you want. Look at your mobility, you've not got any problems. So. How are we doing? Are we all done on that? Tight? Right. Now the other thing that it gets a bit of hammer. Don't pass the plate, this is your shins. So to get into them, I'm going to be soft. Right? All we're going to do is kneel on that roller. Okay? Just turn sideways. So you're kneeling, turn on the floor, get the start to stay on the floor, hand out the front of it, and then gradually roll your way up into the roller. Yeah? And just roll your shins back. Oh, they get quite a bit of hammer, particularly if you're somebody who heel strikes when you run, you find that down the front of the shin might be so I'll be honest with you. Right, Nick? Yeah. Good, so, yeah. Yeah, not bad. Not bad. How about you guys? <laughs> yeah, I just thought about them down here. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So again, if, once, if the top's not giving you any jib at all, yeah. and the bottom is, spend your whole minute on the sauce spot. Don't waste time on areas that aren't tight. And that goes for any of the exercises I show you. If you're not finding that you know, you've got any issues with them, then yeah, you just move on. Alright? <laughs> 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 right? So then what we're going to do is we're going to move up. <coughs> so, um, we're now going to work on quads. 
quads, yeah? Two ways to do your quads. So I'll start with the low pressure option. So this one will put less pressure on your quads and be less uncomfortable, all right? So all you're gonna do is you're gonna lie in your row with the roller just below your hip points, okay? But you might need it a little bit longer. All right, and then all you're gonna do is take your weight on your arms, and you're just gonna roll yourselves backwards and forwards. Okay, now remember what I'm saying about your calves, about only 10 and a half feet. To angle our legs, do the same in this position. Right down to the knees. Yeah, so right down to just above your knee. Okay? So to get the inside of your thigh, yeah, so to block this area, we're going to want to turn our feet out. And if we want to get inside, we're going to turn our feet in. And if we want to get right down the middle, we're just going to have our toes pointing dead straight down again. Yeah? Okay? I'm assuming they're tight, yeah? Yeah. Are you guys feeling that? Yeah. Yeah? <laughs> My calves are alright, I don't know what I was talking about. It's bloody acne. The outside. The outside. Say it turn it inwards. Yes, just turn your toes in. Okay? You're going to be blind, you know? It's very calm, you're right. Now, I know you feel it now, but if you get to the point where this isn't working for you and you want more pressure, all your way through one leg. So all we do is we shift that roller over and we same start point, same finish point. But we stick this leg out to the side and then we're just gonna roll like that. Yeah? And you can actually lift the foot off if you want to get more pressure down through that quad. Yeah. Okay. Tight. <laughs> Muscle groups, if you do a bit of running, oh. they get some hammer. I mean, you must be able to press with your, your lower leg, I believe, to be honest. It's, it's obviously this thing you're going to need to do some running. And again, left or right, which one's tighter? Spend more time on the tighter side, they need to. How are yours? What's that leg last week? Ah, now, good point. Very good point. Do any of you play? Contact spots or anything where you like to get a knock. Yeah. Uh, it's okay too. It's still, it's still not very easy. Doug, so I'm going to show you a move, an exercise for that particular area. Okay. Go, go on here. So you've had a knock or a dead leg. Go, roll. Yeah. On that position. Yeah. Alright. Uh, so you just go on the other side. Yeah. 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 Ye
okay? Because this might be Alright, and then from there, all you're going to do is roll like that. So remember, this leg's taking some of the weight, and I'm rolling. But like I said with the other uh, positions, you need to move the foot round. So you're going to work all the way around what is quite a big area of muscle, yeah? So for you, Steve, you want to avoid, so if you're rolling, uh, sorry, oh. yeah, that's <laughs> the yeah. Just hear it then. Yeah, yeah, that's alright, you should be How's that feeling? Do you not get drugs for this? <laughs> <laughs> Do the, tight, the tighter you are, and I say this, and usually what happens oh, is, you're on a chill, no. the tighter you are, the more you need to do it, the less likely you are to actually stick to it, because it hurts. Yeah. If you just bite the bullet and get on with it for a week, Ooh, you'll find that all of this starts to wear off. Oh. No, no, I'm guessing you put your own face, you're not feeling any. Nothing. Yeah, it's okay. no, it's all right. If you're not feeling it, try stacking your legs one on top of the other so you increase the pressure and then roll. Yeah. Okay? I realize we get so sweaty from this. Look, if you stretch it. How are we doing? And again, you're looking for sore spots. So if you're finding a sore spot, rest on it. 30 second hold. Yeah, and then take a few passes over that sore area. Okay. One leg worse than the other, or? I'm not trying to. Why not? Typically, this, this, this particular piece of tissue is really tight. People who do a lot of running are a lot of cycling. the tightness of the you know, opposite ends of the hip and the knee. So try the other side. Same idea. So you're going to want to spend maybe a minute and a half on that, maybe 30 seconds on the, on the less painful side, yeah. Just kind of use your time wisely and you know, get the good sort of Don't need to run after this. Just remember you're rotating your leg round as well, yeah? So I'm trying to hit that bow. Yeah, so if we've got the foot pointing up more, we're getting more around towards the hamstrings. And if we've got the foot pointing down more, we're hitting more into the, to the side of the quad yeah? I don't have no Just to take some kind of body weight. How are you doing your right, Steve? Yeah, no, it's good. Yeah, I feel that. It's actually pretty warm. Yeah, yeah. 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 All good? Yeah. So how long exercise filled roughly? So roughly the, the guidance is like a minute per area, but if you're finding really sore areas, I'd say to your nap, get stuck into them. Yeah. So like if that really hurt, I'd probably spend four or five minutes on each leg yeah. a day to get to get it loosened off. You'll notice the benefit there in terms of you know, your ability to run and your ability to build. Right, so that's your quads, so we've done shins, um, calves, quads, IT band, yeah. Hamstrings, a bit of a funny one. You can roll your hamstrings fast sitting on the roll like that. Okay, try that. The issue with that is that because of the shape of the roller and because of the shape of your hamstrings, it doesn't do a great job of that. Okay. So you can you can you can go see the leg. Take your weight on the spare leg and roll like that. The other thing works quite nicely, at least on your lower hamstrings, so this part of your hamstrings are the, the balls. Okay, these a bit too small, so they kind of disappear into your hamstring. That one there, which is a bit bigger, so you literally just chuck it up your lower hamstring and roll like that. That one does a really good job. <laughs> yeah? <laughs> 
option you've got, if you've got access to it, is um, a H or a table or something like that. I'll just quickly show you. You don't have to try it, but what you can do is you can track your roller on the end of the bench and sling one leg across it. It's not just the hamstrings that get tight, this muscle group here, the adductors, get really, really tight as well. We get a lot of sore spots in there. So, what you can do, one leg on the floor, lift the leg that you're going to roll, and that allows me to get loads of pressure into my hamstrings, but it also allows me to turn my leg and get into the adductors as well. Here, yeah. So, if you've got the option of, you know, edge of a table, edge of a bench, even the edge of a sofa or something like that, you can do that. That works quite well. This group here gets a lot of so there's a lot of tightness in it, and again that can contribute to it. It's just worth doing if you've got the opportunity to do it. Alright, how are we doing? Everybody happy? Okay. <laughs> Done the worst bits. Right, now this is the one for you to give a miss to, Steve. We're going to try and work on this area in here again. Yeah. Yeah, so this just is part of the group, goes towards stabilising. segments we're going to go up here to here to start off with. So you're just pushing your knee down onto the roller and roll it like so. No pain? Alright. So again push your knee up in it and push down hard on it. Have a big round. And then when you've done that kind of portion there, we're going to work from there right up into the groin here. So from there up to here. You'll be alright with this top section, Steve, it's just the bottom section. Yeah, I'm just going to have to Yeah. So this is another way to get into the adductors, but it doesn't get into the real meat of the muscle like that you want to show. As you 
of doing that, again, roll your slope around slightly because they, we've got a group of muscles, this hip flexor group going on the side here as well, so roll yourself around to the side as well. But it's only small movements, yeah, to get to the hip flexors. Any questions on that? 
Yeah. So roughly a minute on each area, spend more time on it if you need to. Work on your sore spots, so 30 second hold, and then take a few passes over it. Look for the development of new sore spots all the time. Find them, work on them before you have a problem. Uh, and when you take a minute, you can do it every day. That will give you rapid progress and make the journey When you've finished your run, you get back in. My advice would be purely to run your cars, your shins, your IT bags. Yeah, that probably do. Alright? If you're running on hilly routes with a lot of downhill running and your quads are getting a lot of hammer, you may want to consider rolling them as well afterwards. Otherwise, you should be fine. Before you run the roll of the Alright? So, what we're going to do now, we're going to move on to some mobilizations for your ankles and some stretches and that kind of thing, right? So, if you want to put your roller to one side, start off with a half stretch here, just to get them properly loosened out. So, dead easy, a couple of calf stretches. seconds in that position again. Um, guys, you need your toes pointing dead straight ahead to get the benefit. So if your calves are tight 30 seconds, if you're not really feeling it for that tight, then a 15 second stretch will do you. Times three, yeah? Loosen the tissues off with your roller, now we've gone into a stretch. Next one's then hip flex stretches. Okay. First one was very similar to the calf stretch we did, slightly different positioning, alright? A few little tweaks that you're going to need to build in there to get a good stretch on your hip flexors. You've actually got two hip flexors or two sets of hip flexors. You've got these shorter ones here that only crush your hip joint, and you've got one that's part of your quad group that wants to cross your knee and your knee. So we're going to need to stretch both out. You're going to need to suss out which one's the tight one for you. All right. So for this one here, yeah, the short hip flexors, get into a lunge position. Yeah. And then from there, we drop our center of gravity, drop our back heel towards the floor. You can lift your heel off here. Yeah? Sorry, drop our back heel towards the floor. Now you can feel like you get a really good stretch by just actually back. You don't want to do that. You want it to be nice 
nice and straight here, so the tension is coming from the source. And then this glue, so the glue opposite hip flex out, to try and tense it, and almost do that with the pelvis, kind of tuck your pelvis under, and that will completely change the feel of the stretch. Yeah? You getting that? Yeah. yeah. So remember, chip it, you can chip it, but trying to arch your back, that's the beating the object. So tweak that stretch a little bit more, back tripping and overhead reaching the as well. So if you get yourself settled in the hip, that's a stretch, reach the arm up on the side, which I'm stretch, and across the body, you find that gives you quite a nice stretch as well. But it's important that we keep this tense and that we fire the glue opposite the hip flexor that we're trying to stretch. So you're all the time trying to sort of your pelvis up. Yeah? All alright? Bit of balance there. That's what I'm saying though, if you want to, there's nothing to stop you positioning. You know, if you want to spend a bit of time in that position, point of contact here, point of contact here, and stay there or there. You don't bump. I'm just trying to think if you're out and if you're really tempo or whatever and you can't back up the bridge and you don't have anything to lean on, then you can still stretch that and place around. That's your short hip flexors. Now to stretch. These ones in front back, of course we're going to need um, a little bit of wall space and some mats. So grab your mats each. 